Hello, listeners and readers of AwardsWatch.com. This is Executive Editor Ryan McQuaid and host of the Awards Watch Podcast. Just want to give you a little bit of scheduling update. So this episode ran a little longer than we thought it was going to be, being that it is the first tier episode we've ever done. So we decided that we are going to split it up and that episode 186 is part one of this and episode 187 will be part two of our best picture tier ranking episode i hope you enjoy it as much as we did it is long so we will have part one here and part two will come out sometime later this week so without further ado let's get into the show Listeners and readers of awardswatch.com. This is the Awards Watch Podcast, episode 186. And I'm your host, uh, the executive editor of Awards Watch, Ryan McQuay. Joining me today is Sophia Simonello. Hi, everyone. Dan Bayer. Hello. Josh Parham. Hello, hello. And Zach Laws. Howdy. Eric was supposed to be here, but Eric got sick. So, and everybody else is busy. It's a busy weekend. It's it's summer, so everybody's out doing things. Um, and even after this, because Dan's got to watch the Tonys tonight. So even though this is going to be probably a long show. Uh, so sorry, Dan. But we're doing it early because we're doing something different this week. I thought that we would change things up here. We've been doing a lot of top five lists. We've been doing a lot of current stuff. We're an awards podcast, damn it. And so we might as well do something awardsy, something fun. And uh, surely not to be controversial at all and not have any fights amongst any of us because uh, we all will play uh, respectfully and responsibly. So um, as you see online all the time, there's all these tier lists and people do this all the time, you know, ranking actresses. I think there was like uh, one for like uh, actress winners over the last 20 years that was going up on, on Twitter during the Oscar season last year and whatnot. And I thought that we could do that as a team here, come together and really this all also kind of started by when we were doing our retrospective podcast about titanic and dan brought up something that blew my mind during that episode and i love you dan but you did um about the fact that like what is a top tier best picture winner and ah. how many films deserve to be in the top 10 or, or top 15 or top 20 or in the case of dan it was almost like he was saying 60 could be in the top tier for all we know <laughs> i did not say that <laughs> like please <laughs> we'll go back to the tape but it, it was clearly it was like i don't know you could have as many as you want up there and so i thought us as a team could come together and us decide democratically speaking uh what is our what are the best best picture winners of all time and put them on a tier list and uh, we can put them up on the website or we can put them up online or whatever afterwards so this will be a fun exercise we're going to go all the way from way back and to the most recent, we're going to go all the way from 1927 all the way to this past year's with everything everywhere all at once. We're going to go through all of them. Um, I think there'll be some that we pretty much agree on. There will be a lot that we probably disagree on. And it'll be a lot of fun. Does anybody have any like uh, questions about what we're going to be doing? Does anybody, is everybody excited to do this? this? This first time we're doing it. So if you listeners out there like it, let us know. We can do other lists like this as well, too. But is anybody anybody nervous about this, Sophia? Um, yeah, I'm nervous about this. We're <laughs> going to talk about some of my favorite movies of all time, some of the best winners, some of the worst. I mean, I think what we're doing, too, is why we love the Oscars so much. It's thinking, OK, what was a film's what is a film's legacy? What was its meaning historically? What did it say about the zeitgeist? And we have the opportunity to right the wrongs of a group that can be wrong frequently yeah, yeah. or if not right the wrongs at least tell yes. them you done fucked up yes. <laughs> or at exactly. least or at least kind of agree with them and be like no yeah, they were right because sometimes they are right yeah. they screw up a lot and we complain about that a lot boy do we complain about that a lot <laughs> um, but then we kind of forget about the ones that we love so much and uh you know did anybody do any research did anybody 
watch some films this week maybe that they hadn't seen in a while just to share up their lists? I did because I when we went into this list, I started having like an anxiety attack of like <laughs> people are gonna know which best picture winners I haven't seen now. <laughs> <laughs> so there were a couple that I felt like I had to like have an opinion on. Yeah, so to like I, check out the list. I, and... want, yeah, I had to check off the box just because. But there are some that still are unchecked and for good reason. Okay. All right. Interesting. All right. You know, um, it's um, yeah. Though. I so you know, it's always hard for me to rank these winners, yeah. Because um, Jack's the big well, unranked guy. Right I now. am, yeah. <laughs> um, although I do have many lists that are set to private. <laughs> I that know. are always. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so many, so many. <laughs> um, because they're always in motion, and um, you know, I've seen all ninety-three of of these movies at different points in my life, and ninety-five. <clears throat> 95 films? Yeah, 95 films. There are 93, my friend, aren't there? No, I thought they're 90. Well, 90. Well, I have 95 on here. 95, are there? Last no. year was the what Oscars? Yeah, it was the 95th. 95. Yeah. The 95th well, annual Oscar. You know what? Math is not. Yeah, we're, we're, about. we're, you, you know, just do math. we're not we're mathematicians. Film we're critics. Yeah. 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 Film critics. Yeah. Oppenheimer's not go... asking us to go help with the bomb. Really? You know I mean? <laughs> no. As we go through the list, uh, I'll uh I'll remember which ones I forgot okay. about because I have seen all of them. Okay. Um at at some point or another. <laughs> I wonder um, if it's the same one I forgot. It could I be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um because I mean some of these movies have been, you know, like in my life for 20 years now and um like I've watched for the first time on TCM. Yeah. Like I used to yeah. record 8 hours worth of TCM movies on 31 days of Oscars. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, a lot of these that I hadn't seen, I caught up with about 10 years ago when I was living in LA and had nothing better to do, um, than to just cross things off my to watch list. Um, and there's more movies than I expected that I've been rewatching for most of my life and cherish. And then there's, you know, films that range from really good to average mm. and then there's some where i'm like i saw that one time and i never need to watch it again <laughs> and, <laughs> um, <laughs> that is very fair very fair so josh do you have any uh criterion is there any uh thing that you did this week maybe to prepare for this or are you just ready to get this over with and done um i wish i had had the time to rewatch some of these movies um i didn't i have seen all of the movies that have won Best Picture, but some of them have been a very, very long time. But okay. I still remember like my feelings towards them. And I actually kind of did a preliminary ranking on my yeah. own, just yeah. of my personal feelings. So yeah, um I'm I'm interested to know what other people are going to think. Um also, do you want to explain about the S tier rule? Yeah. Uh, so okay. So I explained this to the group already. I had these notes uh, prepared ahead of time because that's uh, usually what I should do uh, with the show. Um, But uh, I did this week. And uh, so I told the team that we'll be doing this all 95. We'll be putting them in spots between um, obviously letter grades of A, B, C, D, and F. Uh, But with the exception, there will be one that is above A which is S and uh, anyone that's ever done a tier list knows S is for superb, AKA those are the all time winners. Now we are only going to put 15 films, which makes this exercise harder in that list. I thought about doing 20, but that's over 20%. That's way too many. I think they've got to be the rare ones, the special ones that we agree with. And then there's also going to probably be a little bit of killing our darlings and having to move things around. And that's what makes us a little bit, more excruciating, a lot more fun, compromising left and right to see what we can put all in there. Also, this is just our feelings also for the five of us. This does not represent everybody else that is not here today as well. So, you know, as well as also like, I think, I think it was Zach that was saying fluidity. This will change. This could change literally uh, as time goes on. Uh, I know that um, I was texting Sophia, I believe about like certain films and they changed over time just because you, you uh, mature as an audience member, I think than when you first see some of these films, but yes, I've seen all 95 films uh, that have won best picture. And so we're going to do it like that. And sort of, you know, I, I threw this out to the team 
any listener out here, you can also maybe agree with this or have different criteria, but I wanted them to consider the film's legacy, um, maybe the win totals on the night, the year it came out, um, the film year it came out, essentially, like, you know, the other films that were maybe up against it, um, all those things that are about the usual stuff that we uh, sort of deem um, when we are looking back on these years. And, and then above all else, we have to also consider the fact that the movie is any damn good or not. And uh, if it's not, then uh, that's really going to weigh against it a lot. Um, so that was most um, of my criteria. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, I feel like it's pretty fair. Um, if you if no one has seen the film, uh, they will abstain from the placement or the vote of which we're going to put it at. Um, and uh, then, of course, if there is any ties, which there's five of us, which is kind of cool. I mean, so there will be a tiebreaker. But if there is somebody that does have to abstain then the majority uh, will rule on that. But if there is a tie, uh, then it'll go basically off of like a medium. So if like if two people have it as a B and two people has it as a D, then it will go into the C category. Does that make sense? All right. Everybody's giving me a nods on a audio podcast. They're doing visual. <laughs> it makes sense, <laughs> Brian. All right. We're going to be talking for hours, so I'm just <laughs> yeah. conserving my voice. All Trying right. to conserve what we can. <laughs> conserve the voice. I love it. All right. So Let's get into it. All right. So our first film, 1927, 1928, is Wings. All right. Um, we're going to kind of have it as a free fall, guys. Um, so anybody want to go first on Wings? Put it in the S tier already. Uh, I wouldn't go that high. On it. <laughs> I think <laughs> That's fair. I think it's worth noting that um, there were two, two awards given essentially for best picture this year mm -hmm. one was to wings and the other was in this category called best unique and artistic picture and i think that's where the more interesting films from uh this list are you have fw murnau's sunrise which won that mm -hmm. masterpiece um king vidor's the crowd was nominated another masterpiece um films that were really pushing the visual boundaries of early cinema pre talking era taking over um wings though i think is you know for its time a, a really superb film for its time not maybe mm -hmm. of all time when stacked against these other best picture winners mm -hmm. so yeah. where do you have it where do you have it zach uh well i mean i so if we're doing like you can say where you a, personally want to put it. I'm trying to think of where, like, you know, what, like, unofficial star ratings. What are we talking about here? Is like A tier four and a half, and B tier is four. And it's however C. you want to place it. Okay, I mean, I'll go B tier. Okay, B I don't tier yeah. for me. Right. Yeah. Anybody? I mean, if it helps, I have it in the B tier too because I think you know, for a lot of these, especially the earlier ones, I'm thinking about what they meant to audiences and to the medium at the time. And Wings is certainly significant. I do also prefer Sunrise though, but I think, you know, the way that I thought about the tiers when I was making my list was I started looking at the other films that I placed in that tier and how comparable they were to each other. And if they kind of made sense as a group, but yeah, I think Wings is a B tier Makes a lot of sense. I don't like what they do with the characters in this movie, but I think that <laughs> overall, it's a it's a significant achievement. Mm. Yeah, completely agree. Um, I think it is a good movie. It's not one of my favorite Best Picture winners, but it's the first one, and I think for the first one, it is actually a pretty good choice. And yeah, for me, like the B tier is a collection of movies that I would consider they're good. Maybe they're not my all time favorites. I wouldn't rank them highly for me, but yeah. they're good selections. You know, they're not embarrassing choices. And I yeah. think Wings belongs in that tier. Yeah, my B tier, I kind of like it's basically two things. One is like they're good, but not great. Or they were great at the time and haven't aged well. Mm. I actually think Wings for a silent film the film of that time has actually re aged really well um but i can see where if you are if silent cinema is not your thing mm -hmm. this may not do it for you I, it does it for me though i think that the aerial sequences are like standard setting and 
I don't know if they've been bettered until last year with Top Gun Maverick, honestly. Um, so, <laughs> and also, I, you know, we stand a Best Picture winner with gay representation. So, therefore, this is A <laughs> tier for me. <laughs> um, I, I, I kind of have it in in the C tier. It's not a movie that I. It's not. It's not that I don't think it's a bad movie or anything. It's just a movie that. I, I think of a lot um, and a movie I go back to off of, I mean, of these 95 films. Um, I respect the hell out of it. I think a lot of my C tier is, is kind of like what you guys are saying. There's, there's movies I've seen. I either like, I respect them, but I don't like, you know, throw a ton of ad- adulation towards or the movies I just really don't like. Or I, I think that I understand why people don't, why people love them, but I don't love them. Um, but I don't think that that makes them like the worst winners of all time. Um, so I have it at the C tier. Dan has it at A, right? Um, mm-hmm. So, but everybody else has it at B. So it's it's going in the B tier. Sounds like B is uh, the consensus. Yeah, sounds like the B that is the makes consensus. sense. All right, wings. Um, noted B movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> noted B movie wings. <laughs> um, all right, uh, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, the Broadway melody. This oh, one's baby. pretty oh, good. Now this one, <laughs> now, look, yeah. I'm I'm the biggest musical fan on this podcast. <laughs> I'm 98% sure. And I understand why the Broadway Melody won Best Picture. But like, even, even for the nascent days of sound, uh, yikes. Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> um, it, it's a terrible it's, movie. <laughs> it's real, real rough. Um, but that said, like the musical sequences for me are really, really good. And I think they showcase a lot of things that I particularly love um, at this time, uh, particularly in musicals at this time. I, it's, For me, it's like a borderline c to d tier best picture winner and the reason it's borderline that i think that i think for the time it's a little better than it looks today Mm. not much but enough (laughs) i'm gonna be honest i have this in my f tier but i could (laughs) consider moving it up to d Um, because i get what you're saying i think that makes sense i this was just one I remember watching. I was catching up on our dear friend Kevin Jacobson's show. Yeah. And it was when I was, you know, like going through all of the best picture nominees and winners. And this was one that was just, I thought to myself, I will never return to it. And I'm a huge, yeah. huge classic Hollywood fan, but it is, it is rough. Yeah. I mean, anyone who um, was a fan of Babylon from last year, of which I, I think there's at least two of us on here who are if not more, um, knows that like the early days of sound cinema was a very rough period yeah. for Hollywood because they were figuring out how to use the new technology and it led to a lot of really static, clunky filmmaking yeah. of which this movie has a lot of. So I would be inclined to put it in my F tier just for sheer quality alone. However, <clears throat> in all fairness to this movie, um, I might bump it up to the D tier just because um, there's not anything in that it's nominated against that screams out to me as this should have won, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. sure if Ernst Lubitsch's The Patriot were not a lost film, I would be standing for that one, but I'll never be able to know. So I think yeah. that's that. That's enough for me to bump it up one letter grade. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I have it in my D tier as well. I don't like that movie. I think it is like just profoundly bad. But (laughs) it is, I think, just for its place in history, I'm willing to be a little bit kind to it. And yes, they are working with new technology. They don't know what they're doing quite yet. I don't excuse the end results, but I'm a little understanding. So I can be generous and put it in D, but that's as high as I would go. We're not putting this in the S tier. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, this is a D, this is in D all the way for me. I think that that's the consensus here. Um, I agree with Dan. I do think that some of the 
the sequences are like you know the musical sequences are, are still very good um but uh the rest of the movie is just like like cardboard like it's just it's just it's it's like you know when you go out to like a like a meal um and uh and it, everything just tastes the same and it's it, there's no flavor added to any of this you know kind of like if you're going to a vegan restaurant or something uh you know essentially it just does it tastes bad so it's a bad movie so we're gonna put it in the d tier all quite on the western front not to be Here confused <laughs> with the seven other films that have been <clears throat> all quiet on the western front including last year's all quiet on the western front we're talking about the the best picture winning all quiet on the western front from yep. 1930 19 oh no i'm sorry 1929 to 1930 and the better one in the better yeah one. yeah exceptionally better yes <laughs> yeah the um going from the broadway melody <laughs> to all quiet on the western front is what a like <laughs> wow yeah. or like some of the best use of sound in the history of cinema and to go along with that some indelible images and this really in so many ways set the template for an anti-war film or for war films just in general and i given everything to me it's an s tier it's one of the mm-hmm. unquestionably one of the best best picture winners i agree and drop it, it's s tier for me oh two s tiers here we go it's all in right. my top five of like yeah. all-time best picture winners mm-hmm. okay all right yeah i was so torn on whether to go s or a tier for this i did land on a tier just because i was you know giving the third movie we're talking about one of our 15 spots like it's you know it's early but i think you know dan what you said is is right like they got the form down in 1930 that is pretty remarkable and this does hold up i think it's it's an excellent movie so i'm i'm good if we want to go s tier on this it is Um, technically in my top 15 like if i have my picture winners ranked it's up there for me I, I had it in my A tier, although I guess uh, I, I'll be overruled. Um, <laughs> but that's not to say that I don't think that it is uh, not worthy of being in the S tier. Um, I think that um, what distinguishes it from some other early sound films of the era was that it was directed by someone, Lewis Milestone, who had done a lot of great silent cinema mm-hmm. and knew how to use the camera as a storytelling tool because that was the major mistake that a lot of early sound filmmakers made was that you know people just audiences wanted to just hear people talking um <laughs> in movies as opposed to what they had been going to the cinemas for uh which was um visual storytelling um which and- if you're ernst lubitsch yes we want to hear how your characters talk yes. but <laughs> That's a special occasion. (laughs) Yeah. I do think there's some like, you know, um, crunchy. I mean, this is a movie that was made 93 years ago now. So, of course, there's going to be things that don't necessarily hold up. But I think especially when you compare it to the newest version, which took some liberties with the source material that I think kind of. That's a few. Uh, you know, let's just say weren't for the betterment of the of the film. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's all the more remarkable what uh, they accomplished in this film. So I would have it in my A tier just because there's other films that I rewatch more than this one. But I, I don't think that it's a bad one to have in the S tier. I think that's fair. I think for me, it's one of those movies that like is great, but it's so good at doing something so depressing that i don't want to watch it <laughs> right yeah <laughs> i i have it um i'm the lowest one i have it in the b tier it's not that i don't hate this film it's not that i don't like it i know i saw all the looks already <laughs> i'm down hang on um it's a great movie there's no question i just don't return to it and uh, as as much as i do other films it's not to say that I don't think it's deserving. I think it. I think it totally is. I think it. It is a wonderful film. Holds up. 
even with the you know and, and it holds up in you know with all these other adaptations that have come out um you know i think last year's is probably the only adaptation to the original that i i i like i'm not saying that i prefer that one over this film i don't um but um, okay good yeah i'm not i'm not <laughs> I, I like that film from last year i love this movie i think it's a very good movie but it's not one that i i revisit a lot and uh and, and also, i think that's a good point uh you know, i would be willing to put it into an a spot just for that because i do agree is as much as i do think it is one of the best movies to win this award it is not one that i return to very often yeah and i think that is something to consider a little bit so i think i would be willing to put it into an a tier yeah like war movies I warm, yeah. In general, war movies, I'm not going to yeah. watch again. That doesn't mean that when they're worth but it, yeah, they shouldn't sure. be put into the highest tier. And for me, yeah. this the technical brilliance of this one gets it there. Well, this is the yeah. best war movie period that we will talk about today, and I am like, confident in saying that. Like, there, there's not going to be another <laughs> one that I will stem for, but I think. I, I'm good with it being, I mean, initially that's where I was too with the A tier. So I feel like if that is where we're going, like I am okay with that too, to save a spot, I guess. Hmm, okay. I was going to ask also, I was going to ask a technicality question. Oh, Once we decide where a movie lands. Right. Can we go back? back on it. Can we go back on it? So like, let's say we get to 1995 and we realize we have three remaining S tier spots. Can I go back and say, wait a minute, All Quiet on the Western yeah. Front is better than... Yeah, we can move stuff S. around. Okay, okay, good. It is not final until this episode is done. Amazing. Right? Love it. It's I'm right. keeping track of okay. everything in a pages I'm, document. Yeah, so I've, got everything, we... <laughs> I've got everything listed out. Don't worry, guys. So if we want to put this in A with a promise that if there's an extra spot in S... Yeah, I think that that's fair. We're calling yeah. upon this movie to make the leap up. I think that's fine. Yeah, okay. we get through 92 other films and we realize that there aren't. <laughs> There's nothing in S. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of something that's not I going mean, to, yeah. Speaking of something that's not going to be in an S tier. Oh, Simba. yes. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I think... Uh, Oh uh, boy! Like, are we uh, all pretty much in agreement? This is an F. F. This is absolutely this is F. The, yeah. This is it my may, least favorite Best Picture winner. Yeah, it may yeah. be the single worst Best Picture winner. It fights like, with another movie that we'll talk about, obviously. But yes, it is very, very low for me. Wow, I can't, it's so I, bad. Can't believe I, Josh is talking about Casablanca already like that. That's kind of <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Just kidding, Josh. Yeah, it's. Um, I don't think we need to talk about it too much. Um, well, horribly I'll... made, horribly racist, horribly boring. Like yeah. it's, God. it's bad. Like it's don't watch one, it. Um, like, <laughs> like to our listeners, don't watch it. No, um, <laughs> I think it's the one best picture winner of this bunch that I don't think has any redeeming value, and I think that sort of says a lot because yeah. there's some pretty bad movies that have won Ooh. best picture. But this is oh wait, it does have one redeeming value. Oh, oh, I know. Let's... I know. <laughs> one, one of the greatest lead character names in the history of cinema. <laughs> well, you got to say that's the only, the, the only the name, redeeming yeah. value. You have to what say is the it? name. Isn't it? Well, it's been a long time since I've seen. Let this. me pull it up. On, it's uh, Yancey Cravat, right? Yeah, <laughs> Yancey Cravat. Yeah, the, the greatest name. When and look, the... I love. And Irene that's Khan. supposed to be the male lead, yes. Yancey <laughs> Cravat, played by Richard Dix. <laughs> Which, sure, sure. Yeah. Sophia, you were gonna say something? Oh no, I was just saying I love Irene Dunn, but not enough. Not in this. this. <laughs> not in this. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, moving on. Grand Hotel. Yeah. Grand um so Grand. i actually talked about this on uh our friend kevin jacobson's podcast we're gonna be dropping uh, kevin's name a lot today folks <laughs> a, lot. Be a drinking we've, game we've, we've all been that. on kevin's show we've <laughs> yeah. all this is you know i i there's an idea that i have for a follow-up episode of this of doing this episode down the road oh, God. Kevin, so <laughs> but anyway go continue um yes yeah, so uh you know i think this movie's decent I'd probably put it in either the B or C tier. Yeah. Uh, 
most of that comes from the fact that um, it's nominated against um, one of my favorite movies, Shanghai Express, Joseph mm -hmm. von Sternberg's film, um, and a couple other movies that I think are pretty good to great, like Ernst Lubitsch's The Smiling Lieutenant and One Hour With You, uh, The Champ, yeah, um, Champ, King Vidor. Um, yeah, and it's also just, it's such a bizarre winner in that it's the only film that ever won Best Picture and only Best Picture because it wasn't nominated for anything else. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, it does have some, I think, redeeming melodramatic camp qualities to it. You know, um, it's like the first of its kind in the sense of, you know, it was this big um, MGM all-star melodrama, you know, that they tended to specialize in throughout uh, their heyday, you know, just like get a bunch of your top name talents and put them in a setting together. And that's enough to have people spend their nickel at the movie theater. So it is um, sort of like a movie of simple pleasures. Yeah. Yeah. Although those simple <laughs> pleasures are done in the most grand style. I remember it most as the movie that Jack Lemmon was going to watch apartment um, yes mm -hmm. and... i was gonna mention that <laughs> so yeah so it's a delightful movie and kind of inconsequential i for me it's 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 b tier perfectly nice yeah. i put it in the c for me only because it is a good movie but it's not really one that has ever really left a huge impact on me so that's why I feel like the C is like, okay, movies, I don't hate them, but I don't really yeah. consider them in a broader scheme of things. So yeah. that's where it landed for me. I'm with you, Josh. It's mm. it's firmly in yeah. the C. The C tier is where like I start to side-eye a movie. Yeah. Mm. And I don't side-eye Grand Hotel at all. No, like, but I don't need, but it, do it, does, did it need to win Best Picture? No. Is it my favorite of this grouping? Probably. Yeah, but then also like I'm like, but then I also look at it amongst the 95 and I'm going like, oh am yeah. I, am I like am I ranking that high? Like, am I thinking about this? You know what I mean? Like, you know, I think you know, like C feels like home for it. You know what I mean? You know when a movie just feels like perfectly in a grade. You know what I mean? And like it's like you belong here, and that's good for you. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's hard because C, like when I look at the tiers, C in my head is effectively like a D because we have the S tier, so it's like this whole thing. So you're but... just kind of like moving, yeah. And then no, like F is like F is like burn this and never is, speak of it ever again. That's a yeah, special, truly. special class, special place yeah, no, in hell for this movie. You know what I mean? I have so. this in C too. I mean, it. I think it could really be B or C. I I put it in C as well because I've it's one I've only watched once. It's not one that I really think of as one of the great winners or even like a strong winner compared to the other movies that we'll talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Like for me, C is not necessarily, I think the movies are bad. It's just more mm -hmm. so I don't really watch them over again. I don't think about them all that much. Like they're decent, but I don't really consider them to be classics that I would return to a whole lot. Hmm. All right. I think consensus says C for this. Right. And so that's where it goes. There you go, Grand Hotel. Hotels.com reviews you with a C. All right. Okay. Cavalcade. Who wants Oof. to put this, who wants to put <laughs> this in the S tier? Uh, <laughs> Not I'm gonna, me. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and um, pitch the F tier to the group for Cavalcade. <laughs> I, think this is, I think this is in my bottom five when I look at Best mm. Picture. Winners, uh, especially, I mean, if you think of just where cinema is going, like ha as it's progressing, like Cavalcade is a film that is, I think, just the maybe toughest, like one of the tougher watches for me. And it's not that long compared to some of these giant, horrible epics that we get, but it is, it is bad. Yeah. It's the text for those 
So it's the urtext for those kinds of epics that are going yeah, to dominate definitely. the Oscars. And it has one of the funniest <laughs> traumatic reveals of any oh movie my God. I've ever seen, <laughs> which I oh. almost don't want to spoil it if no one has seen the film. So <laughs> it's, that is truly an all timer. Yeah. That's um, right up there with the ending of Remember Me. <laughs> yeah, oh, <that's... laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a doozy. Man. I, I have this one in D tier because, like, make no mistake, it's bad. But I feel like Cavalcade is bad. Like, not bad necessarily because it's doing anything particularly wrong. It's just bad boring Mm. it is dull as dishwater but like costumes and sets are lovely and i actually appreciate that it's like trying to do something stylistic with its story even if i don't think it works but i don't know like it's it fully revolves around like how much you buy into the pageantry from like the turn of the century and Mm -hmm. i buy into it enough that to me it's not like the bottom of the barrel but it's close (laughs) that's fair (laughs) i have it in the f like i don't think it's insulting in the way everything in my f tier is no but i also just i see that that's true i mean that's fair i also just like I could just throw this one away. I don't care. I mean, like, I remember seeing it. Yeah. Like, I just don't feel anything about it one way or the other. I have no feeling for it. I just remember feeling no feelings. I felt numb. I was just like, get this thing over with. And Sophia's right. It's not, it's not a long movie compared to the things it's nominated against, but it feels long. And I hate movies that make a mockery of its runtime on my, on my time. So, um, (laughs) I get that. It edges it from a D to an F for me. It's that, you wasted my time and that, that doesn't help its case either mm. but it, it's i think it is borderline d to f like you can make the case for either one and, and you'd be fine but i have it in the f tier for now mm. um all right oh, no. i'm going the firing squad oh, with God. this one You're i don't <laughs> i'm gonna be honest i don't hate cavalcade Josh and i know that's the one take. It is always the one that gets the most side eye with me. I I understand because everybody hates the film. I don't hate it. I and I haven't seen it in a very long time. I will admit, but when I first saw it, I thought it was, I thought it was fine. I I was yeah. sort of into, as you said, Dan, kind of the the pageantry that it was presenting, and I do think how much you're interested in that will determine how much you connect with the movie. And like, it's not great, but I didn't hate it. I thought it was okay. Like, I don't think it's really an F tier for me. I didn't have that kind of re- a reaction to it, but I'm not going to put up that much of a fight. I would settle <laughs> with the D tier, but I, I don't think it's quite that bad to put into the F. So where do you have It's not one where, like, I finished watching it and I'm like, oh, fuck off, Academy. Yeah, like, that was Cimarron. That, that was... Yeah, that was yeah. That like, this I- is not Cimarron level. If we want to think about it too, like start to think about the tiers as the movies, like in relation to each other, like this is not even close to as bad as Cimarron. I think no. that's fair to say. So I'm okay putting it in the D tier. I'm just hard on some of these movies. I really, yeah. really yeah, am. I mean, hey, well, the early you know days what? are kind of rough too. The early, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. figuring themselves out. Yeah. Uh, well, I, you know, I had it in my F as well. So, <laughs> we, but mostly also because it, it, it beat out some pretty interesting films. Like I'm mm-hmm. a fugitive from a chain yeah. and George Cukor's version of little women, which uh-huh. has yeah. uh, Catherine Hepburn as Joe March. Um, and, and she uh, done him wrong. Yeah. She, which is a pretty interesting pre-code movie, mm-hmm. uh, that made, made West a star. So yeah, I mean, you know, my, I, I guess why I would put it in my F tier is because I feel so much indifference for it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. but <laughs> see, indifference even... to me is a, is a tier or two above hatred. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Like, like F tier yeah. for me is for like the movies that like I hate. 
Like this, it makes the academy look actually bad. Yeah, they this and not just like eh, there were yeah. slightly better things they could have done. Yeah, like cavalcade, like D tier to me, where I'm looking at it and going like, seriously, like it, not a good choice. Like, but yeah. your legacy isn't completely tarnished because you picked this as best picture, right? Josh, where did you have it on yours? Um, <laughs> I mean, evidence. I, I had to see. I had to see. I had to see. But I'm not. I I'm no, not. No, no, which, like, I, no, I'm not asking so you to rib you. I'm just asking for the purposes of. <laughs> Yeah, I had it in C, but I'm not committed to it. So. I, think, I, I think D is appropriate. For I think D is appropriate. Can we all yeah. agree on that? Yeah. yeah I think for so. the sake of democracy, <laughs> I'll put it in our Again, Zach, we got to compromise on something. <laughs> Just remember yeah, you know. this. See, that's the thing is you remember this and this compromise because later on you I'm going to have to yeah. Uh, extract some compromises from everyone else. Exactly. Right? There's going to be oh something. Oh my god. And there's going to be something I'm big. I'm banking mine up. There's something big. <laughs> got to bank it. So, all right. Next film, it happened one night. I mean, Oh, uh, catatonic I mean, F? Okay, cool. I'll so say F for one night F. I'll say for me it's A tier. I uh, it's not quite S for me. Um, there, and I think it has to do with just some of the, the, it, it has shown its age, I think quite a bit, um, in terms of its pacing and dialogue. Um, but as terms of like an important movie in terms of how it set the romantic comedy template and how it differed from previous movies in order to do so, um, and just the star power yeah. of Colbert and Gable together is fantastic, especially since it wasn't initially supposed to be the two of them. Like, mm-hmm. insane, and it's it's so delightful, and it holds up really, really, really well. But to me, it's like not quite s. Mm. But that's me. I mean, mm-hmm. I think that uh, I, I would. Um... It, it sort of straddles the line for me between S and A, because mm-hmm. I do think that it it there's a case to be made for it being one of the all time best best picture winners. Certainly, I think like and I mean the top it, five. Yeah, certainly it's mm-hmm. one of the th- three best films of the 1930s that won yeah. best picture, and I mean we'll get to the third one in a little bit, but mm-hmm. um, I, you know, it is a movie that there's like 30 some odd movies on this list that I've watched multiple times and it happened one night is one of them because it is, it's a rewatchable, right. Uh, to, to coin a phrase from Bill Simmons. Um, and um, it is such a perfect um, example of the screwball sex comedy that was really popular and re- I perfected in this film. You know, and it is surprisingly modern for a film that was made almost 90 years ago. And it's very nimble and funny and sexy and smart. Um, So I could go either way on this one. Um, I have it ranked in like my top 25. So I guess that makes it an A tier for me. That's where I am too, Zach. I have it an A as well. Um, I I do really love this movie. I think it's very smart. And I think everything that it does for the genre is really important when you're thinking about film history and, you know, it being the first big five winner. I think that's also a case for it being in the S tier. I'm not going to spoil what I'm going to do with the other two later, but I'm sure it will be very predictable. But um, I think that, you know, of the films that we've talked about so far, this one does have the best legacy of, you know, what film students watch, films that are on TCM from this period that people will return to. I mean, this was one of the first old films, like films from old Hollywood that I watched, and it introduced me to Clark Gable and Claude Colbert and this entirely new world of film. So I I can see a reason for putting it in S, but for me, it will be in A totally agree that that's basically where i'm at it's very very highly ranked in my a tier yeah. and it's sort mm-hmm. of one of those things where it's like well if we get to the end and maybe there's a space i wouldn't be upset about it moving into s because i do agree that the 
the legacy and the longevity of this movie really shows you that it is held up. But as of now, I think it is an A, but very, very good movie. And I could understand an argument for S, but I'm putting it in A. Yeah, of the Capra winners, um, <laughs> this is this is the <laughs> one easily. Um, but um, it's not my favorite Capra film. Um, I remember watching it last year and I agree. I respect that it creates the formula for the films, uh, you know, for the romantic comedy, the, you know, the sex comedy, however you want to, you know, look at this film going forward. But for me, I think it gets perfected by so many other films um, decades and decades and decades later. And, um, but you have to respect the history. I have it in the B tier um, for me. Um, again, Ryan's like very you're harsh. Great. Yeah, you're great. Right. <laughs> Wait, oh, also, Ryan, I remember fighting with you about this movie. I think when you watched it last, yeah. and you ranked it really low. I would, yeah, I don't think it's nearly as great as, um, as you know, like Mr. Smith Goes Washington or It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah. Um, you know, in terms of Capra's filmography, um, I think there's stuff in the middle section of the film where it gets a little too meandering at times. And yeah. I think the ending, I don't, while a great ending, I don't know if it's 100% justified. Um, but uh, the chemistry I like is. The ending. <laughs> I know it's a very good <laughs> ending, but I don't know if it's justified. Um, but of the time where it's at, how it became a hit, it being a film that is one of the only films to win the big five, that's that's huge. Um, you know, I it's definitely going in the A. I'm just saying the reasons why I have it in B, but it's it's going in the A tier for now. Um, but uh, whoever said that we might be fighting for the S tier later, uh, we might not. We might not be. Um, so <laughs> while we move uh, off of this film, I just have to note that Claudette Colbert was in three Best Picture nominees from this, this year. year. Yeah, because she's oh. also in Imitation of Life yeah. and Cecil B. DeMille's Cleopatra. So, well, to be know. fair, Zach. Half the films from Hollywood that year were nominated for Best Picture. Like 12, 13 movies. Later. True. <laughs> and and really, like, that was something, too, that, like, kept me from putting this in S tier, even with, like, all its important legacy and everything, is that, like, if you look at the movies that it beat, it's not much. Like, the only thing that would have given it any competition from me is The Thin Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is great. Which, which is a cla- yeah. which is another classic, but like, I think that if it had tougher competition and it had one, I may have been willing to say, yeah, okay, like, mm-hmm. bump it up to S. But A just feels right. Okay, mutiny on the bounty. Uh, I put this in my B B tier. B tier. B tier. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, you know, mostly I enjoy Charles Lawton's hammy performance um yeah. you know <laughs> like i love that. charles lawton in anything <laughs> yeah like yeah. come on like i you know that's that's what gives it rewatch value for me it's certainly mm-hmm. i guess the best adaptation of this book that was nominated for best picture <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to talk about the other one <laughs> But you don't want to talk about Marlon Brando and his uh, his adventures in Tahiti, just oh. like oh, fathering an entire oh. island of oh, children. <laughs> Zach, why don't we move off that one? Uh, I, you know. Yeah. But, oh, uh, yeah, boy. Yeah, B um, is... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have B a, like, for B, me, too. I have B to C. I could go either way, you know. You know. It's... Uh, my initial placing of this was actually A. Oh, I'm gonna be honest. Um, and again, this is another one I haven't seen in a while, but I do remember the first time I did see it, I thought it was excellent. And I do like Charles Lawton's performance a lot. I just was really into the whole story that it was telling. I get that it doesn't really have that much of a longevity for other people, so I would be willing to place it into B, but it is a movie that I do really, really like. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, I am okay with it being in B, even though I'm a big fan of the film. I'll say this, Josh. Like, I haven't seen it in uh, maybe like two decades now at this point. But like, it is something that I remember liking a lot when I watched it. Mm. 
but I don't remember very much of now outside yeah. of Charles Lund. <laughs> and that's good reason to put it in to B, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Not my favorite film in the lineup either. That's why I put it in B. Mm. Or C. So. Yeah. Top Hat and Informer. Uh, much better. Well, I'll. I'll Summer watch. Night's Dream, too. Yeah. Cat, Cat and Blood for me. Oh, oh, yeah. oh okay. Too. Look, yeah. there were like 20 Best Picture nominees. <laughs> Again, there were enough. These yeah, mid 30s I mean, years. Like like, like... <laughs> there's some of these. I'm like, did you all just like, it's like um, the Critics' Choice Awards. Everybody's getting in. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know. These years in the mid thirties, I'm like when people were complaining about the ten nominees. I'm like, do you understand? Like, and there were less <laughs> movies made. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yet there were so many campaigns for write-in votes. So <laughs> many, so many. All right, the great, the great Ziegfeld. Ziegfeld. I mean, this is C for me. Like, it's I, I remember barely anything from this movie. Yeah. I do remember not hating it when. When I saw it, but at the mm-hmm. same time, it packed. So I kind of feel like that's where I would put C for me. I got it in D. D is in. Don't think I'm ever going to watch this one again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, that's where I had it. Um, you know, I, I I think it's there's some impressive things in the film, like the musical numbers. The problem is that it's like it's three hours of you know padding and only three <laughs> <laughs> and like one of the oddest best actress nominees I've ever, oh uh, we can't winner, even winner uh, yeah. yeah see that's uh, like how... hey that's that hey it, that's another conversation for another time because we'll probably do actress rankings down the road who knows louise reiner Oh my God. I mean, the, the back to back, we're not talking about the good earth today, thankfully, (laughs) but I mean, she is just, she's kind of a repellent actress to me. Like when she's (laughs) in in movies, I just am instantly out. I cannot, and I have a really hard time locking into them. I, I had this in my C tier. I, I understand this, the D ranking too. I mean, I could go lower on it for sure. Um, it's, it is one that just for me is utterly forgettable and, yeah. you know, I I can't tell you many things about it aside from a few awful Louise Reiner scenes. <laughs> Look, mm. I respect that Louise Reiner came out of nowhere, won two Oscars and said, you know what? I'm good. Um, <laughs> I, you know, respect all the respect to her. Um, I have not seen this movie in oh, so, like oh. I don't know how long. It's been a long fucking oh, time. Long, long time. I really like to be honest, don't remember okay. seeing it, except I know that I have because <laughs> I have a lift. It, it's the whole thing. But like I, I don't I don't remember so, so anything. Abstain, I don't remember it? anything. It was uh, I'm saying that like C D feels about right. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Like, because if I remembered really hating it, then I'd be like, y'all are being very kind. So, Dan, you would pick <laughs> C or D? Which one would you pick, Dan? I C, I guess. It's fine. It's middle of the road. I don't care. I think the consensus is a C. I think I'm the lone D. Zach, yeah. I think, was a D. Zach I was, was a D. D. Well, yeah. And Dan C. But I don't, him. you know. Yeah, I don't care. Like, that's yeah, the thing about this movie. About this. <laughs> Not this <laughs> exercise. <laughs> yeah. This like, movie. Yeah. This it's movie sort of, I don't care about. <laughs> like, it's, in fairness, it's, I would rank it in like the middle tier of the 1930s Best Picture winners, mm, but that's also because yeah. you have Cimarron right. and Cavalcade. Cavalcade. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm tempted by like looking at what it was up against to bump it down, just because like Dodsworth and Mister mm, Deeds goes, goes to, town, to town, and um, Leveled Lib- Lady. I mean, like these are much much better movie yeah they are yeah i don't deny those are better movies but i think the film itself i like i said i just don't hate it Um, so i don't feel like i am motivated to put it in d because to me that's the section of movies that i actively don't like and i can't say that i actively didn't like this movie i just don't remember much from it yeah all right well we'll put it in we'll put it in the c tier how's that sound all right all right the life of Emil Zola. 
I mean, t- talk about a, a one-two punch of forgettable best picture winners. As in, <laughs> yeah. this one best picture? Uh, yeah. uh, what? Right? <laughs> so I have not seen this one mm-hmm. because I've just heard so many terrible things about it. But I just like to read to people the list of movies that this beat mm-hmm. in 1937. Go ahead, Dan. I approve of The that. Awful yeah. Truth. Yeah. Captain's Courageous, Dead End, the film that shall not be named, mm-hmm. In Old Chicago, the good Earth, Lost the good Horizon, <laughs> 100 Men and a Girl, I don't know what the fuck that is, but Stage Door, Society and, and A Star is Born. Yeah. And the best picture winner amongst all of that was The Life of Emil Zola. <laughs> Dan, I, mean, I have seen The Life of Emil Zola, and you might actually remember more about it than I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. same. I mean, the fact same. that it the fact that it beat the awful truth is is it. Oh, that that's what you, one of my favorite movies. Well. Mm-hmm. It's, Talk about a, 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 this one of movie. The comedies. Sorry, this sorry. movie is a sleeping pill. It really, <laughs> really is. It's a it's a suffering journey, and it also has, you know an actor who i just again like some of i have very strong opinions about the actors from this period i either really love them or find them very difficult to watch and paul mooney is one that Mm. he is on my no fly zone like i just if he is in a movie (laughs) no thank you but yeah this this for me is in d tier i don't hate it i but i don't i just remember it being so difficult to get through and just not caring about it especially compared to its competition it's another one of those like urtex for what the Oscars would go for, yeah. Mm-hmm. Not, which was like movies about great men of history. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it doesn't. Um, there's nothing really special about it, um, and I quite frankly get it confused with many other films that were released <laughs> around the same time period yeah. that were also starring Paul Mooney. <laughs> Like the previous um, years, the story of Louis Pasteur. That's right. I mean, I would always like get it mixed up in my mind of like, yeah, that he won best act. He because um, he won best actor for that one. As yeah. As I, yeah, not this, yeah. Though. Not this always, one, which is yeah. weird. I I'm think that like, I yeah, just he... conflated the two in my head. Actually, I think <laughs> they the might have been the same. Movie they are the same. Right it's actually the same person. <laughs> uh, it's Emile Pasteur is actually the the name of the film. Yeah, I initially had it in C kind of for the similar reasons with um, Zigfield, but I do, I'd be more willing to put this in D just because it is so boring. Yeah. You know, at least Zigfield has some of those like kind of production sequences that are a little bit more engaging. You don't have anything like that in this movie. And it does, as Zach said, kind of set the template for the stale biopic looking back at great men in history type movies that the Oscars would become very obsessed with. And I think that alone <laughs> means that it should go down lower. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I, I agree. D is exactly where this thing. Belongs. Yeah. Like it's not F. F has some other spots, you know, don't worry. They're no, coming. We're gonna get, don't yeah, worry. Someone. Coming. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll have company. Um, but yeah, I think we can all agree on, on D, right? I think that sounds D, good. D that's fair. Yeah, Everybody yeah. Um, their heads, correct. We can move on. Yeah. Uh, you can't take it with me, or take it with you. I always, <laughs> I always mix it up. See, I always screw up the damn title of this movie. Because, oh, by the way, this movie watched it last year. <laughs> the biggest nothing burger of a movie ever. I truly, God, it is. It is like, it's got all. It's it's. <laughs> this movie has everything you like about a Frank Capra movie all the people you like of a Frank Capra movie, mm-hmm. yet it feels completely devoid of having <sighs> any of the insights or care or like sweeping emotion or just like anything that resembles those other classics. It has no it charm. Walks into a best picture and it's like, what were you all smoking? At the and time? again, like the films that this beats is insane yeah i mean insane it just, it just too i mean the adventures of robin hood alone mm-hmm. yeah. but then you also have fucking grand illusion mm-hmm. pygmalion test pilot even which test pilot is crazy like my god 
Jezebel. Jezebel, like, um, and if you wanted to do yeah. something like you, mm-hmm. like Boys Town was right there. Like, I mean, that's better. I despise you can't take it with you. I really? have it in D tier. I just think it is all like quirk and like cutesiness this without any actual charm. It's got a, a lot of hope. I, yeah, I I really like and I like all these actors, but someone just took like all the reins off and said, just be crazy, just as crazy as you want to be. And I find this movie exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> and Not I don't half- find it fun. Like, and yeah. it's funny because like I love bringing up baby, and I know a lot of people don't like it because they find it exhausting and no, it's too much great. and they can't uh, keep up to I, me I that is like, this movie oh, like okay. i yeah. it is exhausting to there's constantly something going on and this one is doing this weird quirky thing and this one is doing that weird quirky thing and they're all quirk 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 quirk, quirk. and i just don't care <laughs> it's also like weirdly stereotypical even in yeah yeah time. Like the yeah. more it, I've watched, you know, like when you go through Capra's filmography, he actually, you know, he's very smart. He gives his he gives his characters a lot of agency. He doesn't treat a lot of them like dum dums. A lot of the characters in here, he's just looking down upon them. Really, and it's the yeah. com- this movie is the complete antithesis to It's a Wonderful Life. Like that is a movie about like the small town and and it, it's 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 been, they're basically the same film. Only that movie has all these emotions and has this great Jimmy Stewart performance and it all ties back together. And it, and it just it's it feels like a, it, it's a perfect movie. That's why it's the, that's the case. But then this movie is just like we're just go, we just got all these pieces of yarn and we're going to somehow make a sweater out of this thing. Yeah. And by the end, you've made the most ugly sweater on the planet. I have it in the D tier. That's where I have it too. But I could put it in the F tier easily. <laughs> an ugly sweater movie. <laughs> it is. It is an ugly sweater of a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I had this in the C tier. I don't hate it nearly as much <laughs> as everybody else seems to. Maybe it's because when I saw it, my expectations were kind of low for it. Because I'm going to be also honest that Capra, I'm very hot and cold on. Like, I think he has made some. I, same. But yeah. like that, like sentimentality that runs through all his stuff, I can kind of. It either works or it doesn't always work for me. Mm-hmm. It doesn't so, always. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's, and it's this a, one I thought was uh, okay. I didn't hate it. It didn't really leave much of an impact on me either. So I don't have strong feelings about it. But you know, if you want to throw in a D, I'm not gonna put up a flag either. But I'm putting it in there. That's it's cool. another example. <laughs> It's another example of something that was very popular with the Academy at the time, which was to take a popular Broadway hit and just transplant it yep. onto yep. And the, the screen. And the big all-star ensemble. Again. Yeah. And, and also, what, what what we'll see throughout the Academy's history, uh, someone that they know and trust that's won a Best Picture before, they, they, they don't mind yeah. going back to that. I but also, that's why it won. Yeah. Well, they also, you look at the... One. And the studio voting blocks. Yeah. This yeah. was Columbia's only nominee. Yeah. And MGM had four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That won't help them from going in right into the D tier. Yeah. I'm fine with the D tier. I had it in the C tier. It would have been firmly in the D tier for me if it had the other Capra favorite, Gary Cooper, who is the most boring actor of the period. <laughs> oh, my God. For me, who was popular. <laughs> but it had Jimmy Thank Stewart, you, so it was C. Yeah. So, but I'm good with D. It's really forgettable God. for me. And Capra, I'm also hot and cold on. I really love the ones that I love, and the others are a little yeah. too... I don't know. Yeah, D's sentimental. That, that saccharine sensibility of his just does... Like, sometimes yeah. it works, but other times I just find mm-hmm. it to be close. Yeah. Like, Mr. Smith goes to Washington it somehow works almost in spite, in of, spite itself. of it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have this. Yeah. God, Mr. Deeds. What an, what an awful movie. Um, Better when Adam Sandler did it, so... Honestly... <laughs> Yeah. I'm not joking. I'm, I'm not joking either. Honestly, yeah, because he's a better leading man. Uh, well, 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 all right, 1939. I, okay, yeah. <laughs> we have enough of a conversation that's about to happen. We yeah. need another one on top of it. Yeah. All right. I, I'll leave it alone. <laughs> leave it alone. All right. Well, 
we're hitting some big ones now, folks. Yeah. We're leaving the 30s, mm-hmm. the last one in the 30s. I'm sure this won't start any fights whatsoever. Gone with the wind. Who wants to start? Mm. Uh, as the resident southerner. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> the man living in LA. <laughs> yeah. 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 This, this been I'm like, Ryan Angeles literally for... lives in Texas. I'm literally <laughs> in the south. I'm Texas the south as you south. can get. You know what I mean? This is Texas, but true, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, I have lived in Los Angeles for the last 11 years now, but I was born and raised in Charlotte, North Carolina. True. And so Gone with the Wind was a major part of my yeah. life growing up. Um, and I I have seen it many, many times. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, look, I, I think um, it's both like, a superb example of Hollywood studio filmmaking of the time, mm-hmm. while also being so firmly a film whose attitude is of that time, right? So it both, I think, holds up to modern sensibilities in its filmmaking, while also being dated in its worldview. So that's what conflicts it for me, right? Yeah. Um, because there are aspects of this movie that I, I do genuinely enjoy, or I wouldn't have sat through it as many times as I have. Um, you know, like Vivian Lee's performance and the whole story arc of Scarlett O'Hara. Ryan, I know you hate Vivian Lee. Yeah, I've we're. I, I'm ready to throw down. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> the two best best um, actress winning performances. Okay, boom. Let's do no, it. No. Um. Yep. Yep. Uh. Yeah. I mean, I think you know. I, I, uh. I, I won't. I won't spend too much time talking about it. Um. Because there are some things that I you know are are certainly dated, and problematic. Yeah. But I do think that you have to sort of. Um respect the scope of the filmmaking in this um and the yeah, whoever directed of, it you know what I mean? yeah well again like when i say like a triumph of the old hollywood studio mm-hmm. system the yeah. real auteur of this movie was david O'Sells. yeah um and which was not the case with the film of his that won best picture the next year which we'll talk about um but uh you know i think that you do have to kind of reckon with the importance and the legacy of this movie when you're Mm. talking about best picture winners um and you know i think it's something that's moved down in my rankings throughout the years because of how it's how it's added how some of its attitudes have dated but i do think that there are qualities of this movie that keep it from that would keep me um from like moving it so far down the list as to dare i say it move it out of the a tier so that's my soapbox on gone with the wind (laughs) (laughs) yeah i pretty much agree with that i i think you do have to wrestle with its its sensibilities of the time for sure and there's definitely problematic elements in it but i think you do have to take into account its overall legacy and how important it is just as a filmmaking um, piece. Cause there's just some beautiful breathtaking things in that film and, you know, highest grossing movie of all time, mm-hmm. um, you know, when adjusted for inflation. And I think that there's just too many things that are so memorable and so impactful that the lowest I could go is an A like on paper, it should be an S to be honest, but you do have mm-hmm. to kind of take it down just a couple notches with modern sensibilities but you also have to recognize that this is an incredible achievement and it's a it's a good movie like yes there's it things in it that are not great but as a whole i think it's a really spectacular achievement and and i will go ahead sophia oh i was just gonna say as far as you know it's it's like problematic aspects it was protested at the time yeah so even in the 30s like people knew that you know if this were a straight adaptation of the margaret mitchell novel like that it was going to be and you can tell from the scroll at the beginning of the movie (laughs) where they basically are like this is the best thing ever 
slaves love slavery. We love the South. You know, it's, we know that in the beginning and we do, I think, have to wrestle with that and its legacy and know that, you know, it's a, it's a particular worldview that is wrong and that does not hold up today. But as far as a film itself and a filmmaking achievement and a best picture winner, I also, I have to put it in a, for me, like the, the Max Steiner score, it's just sweeping, like breathtaking epic qualities. And I'm, I'm sorry. Like I have to say like Vivian Lee's performance is incredible. It is towering. It's an opportunity and a performance that like women do not get in these times or really even still today. She still has the most screen time of any actress who has been nominated. And she also just, she's so many things all at once. And it might be a performance style. It doesn't work for people, but for me, like being able to see a character who is, childish and smart and wicked and knows how to manipulate other people and knows the power of her beauty all sometimes in one single shot it is a staggering performance and the fact yeah. that this almost went to other actresses is terrifying like we are so lucky that we have it yeah, Leah Scarlett O'Hara so yeah I mean as do I turn on Gone with the Wind on the weekend no but do I can I no, deny there... its achievement you can't turn it on on the weekend because there goes your whole weekend. Uh, yeah, like who has four <laughs> hours to just drop True. on a movie? <laughs> but like, like I will say this: like for me, Gone with the Wind is S tier, and it is S tier. Period. I I don't think there's any argument that the scale of the filmmaking that is just like insane, even by today's standards, it's insane. Um, like so you were saying, Sophia Vivian Lee is just out of this world and clark gable is right there with her Mm -hmm. honestly and i would even like lightly defend the less savory parts of the film as being like yeah these are I certainly don't agree with these views, and I wish that no one still espoused them today. They were the attitudes of the time. They were the attitudes of the time in which the story was taking place. And that is something that I feel like we ignore at our own peril, or else Mm -hmm. it will happen again. And I feel like that's really important that we, you know, grapple with that piece of our history as opposed to shunting it aside or say eh, maybe let's not look over here in this corner um and aside from all that this is just like one of the most staggeringly well-made films of all time the fact that it is still it this came out in 1939 and it is still the all-time box office champion adjusted for inflation and it will always be yeah. like, I'm sorry, nothing will ever top it. And that goes to show you how just the size of this impact at the time, it's like nothing else that we have ever seen in terms of scale, in terms of impact, in terms of everything. And for me, that's, if you don't put that in S tier, then what do you put? I think it's also important to talk about like um, intention and mm-hmm. um you know, because if you compare it to something like, I, I don't think that the intentions of this movie and its portrayal of the Old South were evil and nefarious no. um, in the way that, say, The Birth of a Nation was. No, it's um, not on the level of The Birth of a Nation, that's for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you look at um, Hattie McDaniel's performance, which won one of the eight Oscars or 10, if you're you know, depending on what DVD cover, <laughs> really, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the, the special um, ones that got. <laughs> um, her character is um, one of the most nuanced in the film. I mean, a- a- in terms of just like the way that she responds to Scarlett O'Hara's childishness, right? Um, it's not a typical kind of mammy performance, and I think that speaks to McDaniel's ability as an actress. Um, And so I think like that's, you know, it's a thorny issue. And certainly I am not the best person to be talking about what, you know, the nuance of this. But I do think that if you look at it within the context of the time and some other films that were coming out at that same time, 
it doesn't, I don't think it rises to the level of something that should be dismissed entirely. I think it's important to just look at it and deal with it and, you know, discuss it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, speaking of discussing it. So I get all y'all's points. And this is this is not some Twitter thing that's happened I in the last couple of years. I swear to God, Ryan, if you this put is, this... This has been something that has, since I was a kid, because Zach talks about it, they would play this movie all the damn time when it was rain days here in the South. <laughs> and I tell you, it was infuriating because it's like, all the other students got to watch other things. <laughs> and we got stuck watching Gone with the Wind because it was my fifth grade teacher's like favorite film of all time. Besides You're going to hate that... what we watched. We watched All the President's Men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and that woman truly was one of the worst women in the world. And she's probably burning in hell somewhere. <laughs> um, but damn, Ryan. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm not wrong. You can ask my parents. She was horrible. Um, to talk then, about Lady Bird Johnson like that, Ryan. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, it's not like she married somebody particularly any great. Anyway, <laughs> point is, is that I, 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 I had a lot of vitriol for this movie for a very, very long time, and I thought, okay, you were a kid. They're showing you this movie a lot, like you're going to probably hate it because it's not a movie you want to watch anyway. It's right? a very adult movie to be very showing adult movie to show like... fifth graders. You know what I mean? It has the word damn in it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> how, how, do they, how do we not have to sign a permission slip for that? Right? You know what I mean? I love so... that they wanted it to be, frankly, my dear, I don't give a hoot. hoot. <laughs> um, but anyway, so <laughs> grow up and then and I've watched it twice. Um, once and I think it was high school and the other one I was when I was post college and I just it is to me yes it is a, a staggering achievement there's no question about that the production design of it um the direction of it, it it you know kind of brought all together and whatnot it is it is definitely an achievement uh but for me it just I I yeah I can't sorry uh I don't like the character and the performance doesn't help. I, I've never been a Scarlett O'Hara person. I've never been a Vivian Lee in this role person. And I speak my truth. And that's okay because we all disagree. And you're entitled to your wrong opinion. That's and, fine. And, mm -hmm. and I yeah, I agree with you about Clark Gable. I think he's the best thing in the film. Um, but then also too, I, I think that for me. So years gone on. I don't watch this movie one because I know it's extremely long, and if I'm going to watch extremely long movies, there's tons of other movies that we have on these lists um, that I would much rather watch. Better performances, uh, with better direction, better screenplays, and less problematic things to going alongside of it. And it's a very complicated film. I understand that. I don't think that it should be banned or not talked about or not studied or any of those things. You should. I mean. For God's sakes, like I love that Spike Lee has talked about how much that he he still teaches this at you know Open New York for his students, and he even put it at the beginning um, uh, of Black Klansman, and showing you know obviously this is this is not something that I think what people online want to erase it from the history books. I'm not saying that I'd never want to do that because we have to learn from our history. That being said, still not a great movie for me and yes i do think that it in modern contexts feels very weird that your heroes are conf the confederacy it does and it's very it's very hard to get over that and for some it may not be for others it may it it, it may and, and that's i don't know story. i still it's see them as anti-heroes i have always seen them as anti-heroes i think I mean, also you know the um i have it to that i have it placed in the d tier um i'm I sorry did, did you say d d as in don't think i want to talk okay. about it much longer 
So I am going to, I, I just think based on the exercise itself, but I, I understand where it's going to go. It has so, to be okay. at least a, I no, I understand. No, that. I'm, I'm saying judging it. by the rules that you have laid out. No, Mr. I, McQuaid. No, I understand <laughs> that. My opinion means fucking nothing on this right now. Okay. That's why I just had to say it. It's, sounds like the majority it's a, um, and I think the lowest we can go is an A. Yeah. yeah um, I will say this. I will fight on S, but I understand it also as well. That why it would go into an S tier. Um, but but that but I, I get it. I'm not again, I'm on an island by myself. I've always been on the island by myself when it comes to this movie. <laughs> there are movies that everyone is on an island by themselves in their entire filmographies or you know, in the, of the history of, yeah. of you know, loving cinema. So, and this is definitely one of them. There's a couple others on this list that, you know, people are going to probably be really pissed off about me not liking either. So, um, because they're very, very popular. So, it just, yeah, I've never been a Gone with the Wind guy. And that's, I think I'll be and okay. I, I get it. I do. And I understand, that. especially with the context of yeah. today. And there are some things that, yeah, I don't like about that movie that I think are, that, that are things that I bristle at. But, it is just hard to ignore the I mean, get, entire other context around that film too, yeah, and how I, much it is really meant throughout the years of cinema. Like that just feels too big to ignore. No, I get it. I get uh, again. I I get it. I sadly right. get it. So it sounds like we're doing a tier for it. Sounds yeah. Mm-hmm. I do think it's also worth mentioning uh, before we move from this that um, this is not this is the winter of 1939, which is widely considered. To be the greatest single year in uh, yeah, that's the Hollywood filmmaking history, and you know the other nine nominees are all pretty great. Like it beat Wuthering Heights, The Wizard of Oz, Stagecoach, yep. Mr. Smith Goes to Goes Washington. To Washington. Mm. All better movies. Yeah. One of the I, most I, contentious years, and I don't yeah. know if I'd go that far, but oh yeah, they're all it, f- any. I will say that five star movies. Most of these movies could have won and i would not have batted yep. an eye mm-hmm. yeah mr smith w- goes to watch wizard of oz feels particularly like it would have been you know a good winner yeah that's or freaking mr. lucky smith that it was in given its history too that yeah, yeah. Sort of yeah. Wild, honestly like event, you know mr smith goes to washington probably my second and, place yeah if you, the, it didn't yeah win the year before yeah. so i mean wizard of oz is my favorite of this group but this is one of those situations where like there are better movies i think for me personally than gone with the wind but gone with the wind winning doesn't feel like a travesty either it actually feels very appropriate for yeah. for what it was what yeah it was for the time, time it what be... it is now honestly yeah i mean like there yeah. are some movies where like we'll talk about this later but they are the undeniable <laughs> king of the worlds right winner mm-hmm. and when those things yeah. win you're like well shit nothing else is Ever really, you know, I watched a couple of movies, um, you know, like, like you think about it, some movies become like the phenomenon, right? It's the phenomenon thing or they become the the hit when I was sitting down and I, and I watched um, Silence of the Lambs the other day, I was sitting there with my wife and I went, can you believe that in 1992, 91, whenever, yeah, that that was the movie of the year. That was the movie everybody wanted to see. That movie made a ton of money. People were talking about it. It became the zeitgeist. Now that's an A24 released to digital online, and uh, you have to find it. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. that's you know some of the that's the way time is different as opposed to like yeah you're right Josh like it's the highest grossing movie of all time due to an inflation and that'll never change. You know what I mean? Which I also think that that says. A little something, but also too, you know, is what it is. Um, Would you rather it be Endgame? I'm just genuinely curious. I rather it. I rather it be um, Big Jim. <gasps> okay. I rather it be Big Jim. So, and but that'll never happen. So. Mm-hmm. Never. Know. Um. All right. A for now. Gone with the wind. We can talk about maybe S later. Um. Rebecca, we're in the forties. Uh, this I love an, this movie. This is an <laughs> S tier for me. Okay. I love yeah. this movie. It's my favorite Hitchcock. Hmm. Um, I think that this movie is uh, incredible. Um, 
like talk about a swing, right? From a movie I don't really love to a movie I love. Um, I just think that, you know, this is this is some of the best work of Hitchcock's career. I think the performances are incredible. One of the best um supporting performances of all time. Uh it's in this her movie. movie. Um it's her movie, damn it. I mean, it it's essentially now a movie that directors um you know, its influences, the way that it is essentially, you know, the the gothic horror love film, you know, genre has really taken acclaim a lot because of this movie. A lot of horror movies take, you know, their, you know, inspiration from Hitchcock. But I don't know this. I, I'm I also think that this is such a great winner, too, because it's not one I would have ever thought that they would give um, Best Picture to. And I think that it's, it's a very unique winner, in I- my opinion given like what we've seen and talked about before and a couple of years that we'll talk about after it's a, it's, it's a, it's an outlier, I think in a best way. And we get a lot of those nowadays. Um, Like I think a movie like Rebecca, like if it didn't exist, like it feels more akin to more modern sensibilities rather than it does like even of its time. Um, Yeah. It's, it's, it's a great movie. And um, then of course it springboards Hitchcock into more and more, you know, the master status and classics that he's made. But uh, for me, this is like where in his career where it's like, okay, this is where he takes it to the next level. And I love this movie a lot. I do love that the best picture winner in 1940 is about a man (laughs) whose whose husband was just fucking him. (laughs) (laughs) Um, <laughs> hilarious i'm sorry th- th- this is b tier for me i think it's really good um i don't think it's top tier hitchcock um but it's a really good movie overall it's a fantastic year by the way too there's Amazing a lot of great oh yeah, yeah. And he also has I love the foreign correspondent story. in there mm-hmm. you know what i mean the W story, Grapes of Wrath, The Great Dictator, mm-hmm. The Letter, mm-hmm. Our Town. The letter. Yeah. Well, well, our town. This Rebecca is S tier uh, for me. Um, I am looking up at my Rebecca poster that's above my desk. It's my second favorite Hitchcock after Vertigo. I think it's one of the scariest movies to watch as a woman, honestly. And Hitchcock goes into that further um later on in his career. But you know, I love the history of it the battle between David O. Selznick and Hitchcock (laughs) about what they wanted this movie to be because Selznick wanted it to be straight Daphne du Maurier and Hitchcock wanted to be, you know, his playful self, but it ended up being a bit more, a bit Selznick and Hitchcock, but in different ways, which I really like. And it, it opens America up to Hitchcock, which I think is really, really important. And it's just a fantastic movie. I love how beautiful it looks. The way that they played with effects at the time, too, with this and how he mm-hmm. created those little painted sets and sped the camera up when he lit it on fire to create that effect of the burning Manderley. Love the Judith Anderson performance. It's also a time when I do really like Joan Fontaine. There are other times when I do not, but this is a time That's where um, she really works for me. And yeah, I, I think it's fantastic. It's S tier for me. It's uh, it would be S tier for me as well. Um, it's not my favorite Hitchcock because there's a little movie called Vertigo, and uh, uh, Vertigo's yeah. my number two. I, I yeah. just want everyone to understand that because everyone's going to go, "Well, Ryan is it a number one?" It's like, no, that's no, Rebecca's no, it's great I, number I know, one to have. I yeah, I think it's fun. Uh, uh, <laughs> man. Um, and. What's interesting is that um, for a long time, I think the <clears throat> general consensus was that the Grapes of Wrath should have won. Um, and was for a long time, Grapes of Wrath was widely considered to be the greatest yeah. American movie ever mm-hmm. made, up until the Sight and Sound poll named uh, Citizen Kane such. And, you know, I, I think that The Grapes of Wrath is a great film, um, but. I think that that consensus has changed a little bit mm-hmm. in people's thinking. I think that now Rebecca has um, stuck around and asserted itself as a great winner and an all-time winner mm-hmm. um, because of Hitchcock's sheer directorial 
skill. Um, we saw a remake of this movie come out what three years ago, <laughs> um, I... which um, is better than people give it credit for, but still not good. I mean, not yeah, good. Yeah. It's not good. I wouldn't I'm even go with that far. Scale Dan. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Um, Look, you're <laughs> never gonna beat Hitchcock at his own game, but making the doing adapting this story outside of the production code allowed for a much better adaptation of du Maurier. and i also think that the new adaptation gets into a lot of issues of class that are super present in the novel that kind of got lost i think in hitchcock's adaptation well, but it, it's a crap movie but like <laughs> there are things that the adaptation i think that d- does well enough that it shouldn't be just completely disregarded. I liked yeah. the costumes. Well, costumes yeah. are pretty. Yeah. My gosh. Yeah. By the same I'm, token, I'm, I think um, the the ways in which Hitchcock gets around the production code make for a really mm-hmm. interesting movie. I mean, you know, Judith Anderson is one of the great queer coded villains. Mm-hmm. Yep, beautiful uh, of all time, and. Um, I mean, her performance alone makes it worth watching for me. I don't know, there's just so many great aspects of this movie that um, make it an S tier for me. The only other Oscar that this movie won is for its cinematography, which mm-hmm. is gorgeous. Well, no, um, it, it won Best Actress, too, just the next year. Right, oh, exactly. Give <laughs> <Damn> it, Dan. <laughs> um, jo- yeah. Josh, real quickly. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I I think I'd be okay with this. I, I initially put this... Well, actually, I initially put it in my S tier, and then I moved it down to A to try to make room for other stuff, but in my heart, it, it's an S tier. I think it is, like, the definition of one of the greatest Best Picture winners of all time. Looks like we got our first S tier. Yep. Four out of five. And, and considering the to... other things that didn't make it in, this is crazy, but okay. I think S is for so. Sal Snake. S is for Sal Snake. For... <laughs> well, not if you to ask Ryan, apparently. I know, I know. <laughs> hey, it make good movies, and then you get into the S tier, all right? Okay. I'm marking it on the board. There you go. That's one S tier. All right. We're going to try to. We got a lot more movies to cover. You're going to probably going to have to speed this baby up. All right. So uh, we have the the 20s coming up in two and a half hours. No, I mean, you know, Dan (laughs) parlay his vote over to me and then I can vote for some of his if that's okay. Um, No. No, I didn't think so. Okay, we have some forgettable uh, movies coming up. So yeah, we do. Have, yeah, we'll have some ones. the whole 1960s. Yeah. yeah, we'll just we're just gonna go by those real quick. Um, you know, f f f f f f. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but um, how great is how green was my valley? I think this one we could do pretty quickly. Yeah. Um. When if you're going to beat Citizen Kane for Best Picture, you better have the goods. And I think the surprising thing for most people when they watch How Green Is My Valley is that it really does have the goods. This is. It may not be at the grand scale of Citizen Kane or doing the um innovations within the camera that um that Wells was doing on Citizen Kane, but this movie, I mean maybe john ford at his best i just the beautiful visual storytelling wait yeah. like you think this might be john ford's best movie it's definitely up there and this is solid solid a tier for me okay hmm. i'm not gonna go quite that hi i was actually just gonna go see with it um <laughs> i mean i i thought the movie was good i think it is definitely one of those cases where people prejudge it because it beat citizen mm-hmm. kane and they automatically assume that must mean it's a bad movie mm-hmm. i don't think it is a bad movie i think it is actually decent but it is another one that i just don't feel like ever watching again i will defend it as a good movie but mm-hmm. it does not leave a great impression on me throughout the years. so that's why mm-hmm. i put it in c yeah Plus, it also beat Maltese Falcon and Suspicion. Maltese Falcon, yeah. 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 I mean, great. and the Little Foxes and yeah. Sergeant some, York and blah, blah, blah. But there's some great movies in there. And then, yeah, yeah that movie called Citizen K. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I would well, put I'll, it in, I'll... The, in the C tier for me as well. It's not nearly as great of as other, as many other John Ford films. Um, 
is see i'm actually with dan more with dan than you guys um and you know i would say that citizen kane is like one of my 10 favorite films of all time just you know in terms of a movie that i've seen multiple times and always find new things in it to appreciate um my old pal uh just to name drop a little bit here peter bogdanovich used to tell me that he <laughs> that he thought how green was my valley was a better film than citizen kane i don't know if he ever told that to orson wells when he was living in his guest room <laughs> but <laughs> i don't think that would have gone well over a dinner no yeah. um i do i i, I do th- i would be you know i'd be willing to go b tier um at the very least because i do think that this movie um does have greatness in it yeah. and it's not my favorite john ford movie that would be the searchers um mm-hmm. but i think that it's probably solidly in his top five mm-hmm. and you know he i mean just wow. i'm just thinking about the man made like no I mean, he made a, a crap no so, i'm thinking about it too <laughs> yeah thinking about it too. Like, he made um, so many fucking probably movies, in the top God. 10 ish <laughs> there are images in this movie that stick oh with god me. yeah um and I, I think of one in particular that uh again bogdanovich told me the story that um there's a shot where um i forget the actress's name but she's getting married and ford's camera hands up and you see Walter Pigeon standing mm-hmm. in the distance because he's the man who oh, loves yeah. her. Yeah. And he's cast completely in shadow. And apparently the oh. cameraman turned to Ford and said, do you want to get a close up? And Ford responded, no, because then they'll put it in there. <laughs> and <laughs> just the understanding that that image alone was powerful mm-hmm. enough yeah. to convey everything that you were trying to convey from an emotional and a visual standpoint speaks to how well directed this movie is. So that's my defense Mm -hmm. of how green was my valley. I think this movie is really moving. I watched it like a a year ago I did, or maybe two years ago, I did a citizen Kane rewatch. And then I thought I'll watch how green was my valley because it's one of these movies. And we'll talk about a number of them that are known for being like the movie that unfairly won best yeah. picture, whatever that means. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I was surprised by it. I think the direction really stands out. And honestly, I was not a fan of Belfast at all. The Kenneth Branagh movie, but he was going for this and he did not get it with his movies. And that's kind of what I, what I felt when I was watching it, that made me like how green was my Valley more. And I think the performances are strong. I put it in my B tier because it doesn't, it doesn't quite live up to the ones in my A, but I'm okay with it. Being I could put it in B. I would be fine with B as well. I mean, to be honest, mm-hmm. like I do think it is a movie that gets unfairly maligned. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. got that label of it's, it's what happens to even movies nowadays that are not bad movies. No. But they get the stigma of being a bad movie because other people's favorite movie didn't win Best Picture. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's not fair to the movie because the, the first thing you need to do is mm-hmm. realize is it a good movie or not. If the if the movie is bad, then yes, that is another. Yeah, you know that's definitely fair game. But you know it's it's yeah. I mean, it's not a bad movie. I mean, there are other movies I give Best Picture to it, but it's not like a bad movie. Yeah. I mean, it's it's no it's like I obviously I you know thing like a movie like Grapes of Wrath that came out the year before is a much better movie, but still you know it's it's still it's a good film. So yeah, we'll put it we'll put it in. It's B. a good Best Picture winner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, B we'll it goes in, in the B. There we go. All right, Mrs. Miniver. I'd say okay. another B. Mm-hmm. The Greer Garson Defender has logged on. <laughs> we <laughs> love Greer Garson in this house. <laughs> B or so, C, that's where it could go. Like, yeah. I'm I'm in the B camp for this, and I like would even hear out the people who would consider it A, but I'll stay B because this is a fascinating piece of, of wartime propaganda, and it really shook the nation when it came mm-hmm. out. I mean, this was the movie. She inspired people to you know, feel like they could, you know, be like stay at home mothers and wives and supportive during the war and that they had a place during wartime. And I was telling Ryan this earlier this week, but I prefer my war films to be domestic dramas that take place at wartime. (laughs) And I think that this, this Weiler movie, along with another one we'll talk about in a bit, 
um, is pretty, pretty successful at that. So I feel like I wouldn't want to go lower than a B on this one just because of its significance at the time. Yeah. I, I'll go B. I'm more I'm personally a C, but I would, I mean, let me. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be okay with B. It's another one that just for me, I don't return to a whole lot, but I remember liking at the time. So yeah, yeah I'm good with B. Yeah. I'd probably underrated a little too much on my end to be fair and need to give it more of a rewatch but yeah I, I think it's propaganda watch. it's pretty good yeah yeah and just watch it next time ryan knowing that greer married the actor who plays her son after the movie oh my god and it was quite a scandal we stand <laughs> a queen okay what a, what a fucking boss. all right we'll put it in the, the b tier um and uh casablanca i mean this should be quick right Quick S. S Anyone says yeah. not S, I'm going to shoot you. I mean, this is the definition <laughs> of one of the greatest. One picture, of the greatest movies yeah. of all time. Not even yeah. like one of the greatest uh, best picture winners of all time. It's one of the greatest. Yeah, movies. we don't have anything else to say. S I mean, tier. No. S. S. One of the one of the best movies ever made that apparently did not have a director. Yeah. So, oh right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I I can't remember who that was. So really? it could have been yeah. anybody. It Nobody could do it. Yeah, it could have been anyone. <laughs> Joe Blow and, or you know, yeah, or like. Joe Blow, Tiger Waititi, same name. <laughs> um, you know, um, I think the greatest screenplay ever written. Um, mm-hmm. The yeah. screen, um, just excellent. Oh God, mm-hmm. Claude Rains. Every oh, frame. So oh, no. I I too. The you know, by La Masseurs in in the bar. I mean, it, it, when you see it on the big screen, it it, it, yeah. it everyone in their life should see Casablanca, whether you're you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, an awards editor at a big site mm-hmm. or whether you're yes. um, or whether you're, you know, a child looking into cinema, everybody should watch Casablanca. You know it's I mean? one of my yeah. New on the big Year's screen. Eve uh, rewatches. That it's I, my I New Year's to. Day rewatch. Yeah. It's my, it's my first knows- movie of the year. Yeah, always. <laughs> always. <laughs> always, Sophia. Uh, Dan, Dan knows this and I didn't and I told him at, when we were at South by together because I didn't get to watch it. It's usually my Oscar Day film. It's usually mm-hmm. the movie I watch on the day of the Oscars, and I didn't get to. It's okay. And I watched it like a couple days before I got to South by. I mean, what else? What is more appropriate to do on the day of the Oscars than remind yourself of the best film to ever win Best Picture? Well, it's These not, are good. Uh, I mean, it's what that's best. what you do, Ryan. It's that's not, what you do. I mean, that's the film that you watch on Oscar Day, Ryan. You got to admit, <laughs> what else are you going to watch on that day other than the best film to ever win Best Picture? I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. You son of a bitch. Hey, you're, you're making some good first time viewing recommendations for anybody who uh you know might not have seen this movie. Who, I mean, uh, if you yeah, haven't seen this to see uh, Yeah, Picture. I mean if your job is to see, you know, best picture films and do rankings and stuff and you know like gloat about it, you you probably have seen Casablanca. You know what I mean? I mean one would hope. <laughs> who wouldn't who wouldn't have seen Casablanca if you're Okay, like we don't need to open up this view again. We got a lot of movies to get Yeah, we're in we're in the forties. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's, let's let's move on. <laughs> we besides we need to get to nineteen forty four because I need a nap. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Dan. Um going my way. Uh, I, I, this is a D tier for me. I, I kind of <laughs> don't like this movie at all. It's such a dumb movie. I, D for dumb. Okay. It's the it's the flip side of Mrs. Miniver. Like yeah, it's the it boring is. version of, yeah. of Mrs. Miniver, <laughs> and which makes D sense. Like double indemnity. Oh. I was gonna say and gaslight. <laughs> so like, D tier. I yeah, mean, I guess I, so. It's D for me. Like. All I don't hate it. it. I just, I'd, you know, I'd maybe give it to C, but only if I'm feeling super. You're pushing generous. it. See, don't, I, don't, just go yeah, with your heart. Yeah. It's going to right. Yeah, it is boring. It was one of the three films I needed to watch this week to make sure I'd seen all 95. It's like mm-hmm. I guess if you like Bing Crosby, but who likes Bing Crosby? There you go. <laughs> Not as kids, <laughs> his, I'll tell you uh, that. <laughs> his Chesterfield cigarette ads that he used yeah. to do. It's a kids better don't performance. like Bing Crosby. All right, um, The Lost Weekend. I'm a huge Billy Wilder fan. Um, I would admit yeah. this is one of his films that I've, I've not revisited as much as, say, Double Indemnity mm-hmm. from the year before. Oh, yeah. Um, Double Indemnity. I, I would, this would be in like a B tier for me. Um, I would have probably gone with, if I had a ballot, I probably would have voted for Mildred Pierce uh, this year. But mm-hmm. yeah. mm, Same. 
I think I think like I I recently watched it last year, and I mean it it basically creates the template for every best actor winner ever. Mm-hmm. After this point of like play a guy with a disease or a struggle or struggling with something and do it so over the top. And, but Wilder's writing is very good, but it's a movie that's ending destroys everything that goes before. And it was one of the first times, like the first movie to like really show like alcoholism as a disease. And, and um, for audiences back at the time, it was very big, but like nowadays it's more of like, a relic of its past and it's like i would put it as c i mean it's not it's it, it it yeah that ending really kind of fucks it up um because it because it becomes it wraps it up too nice in a bow and for knowing billy wilder it feels like a studio decision to do that and it doesn't feel like billy wilder because we all know billy wilder films can end on such like a such a like hopeless note like ace in the hole is a perfect example of a movie that can just mm-hmm. like done you know like just you know end it there or even sunset boulevard and some in sudden you know if you you know want to look at that really you know not optimistically like i do wasn't this one uh, based on a book though it's basically uh, yes, yeah it was. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah so, so they may know, have been you know oh, they're they're absolutely been a little bit strained by that absolutely yeah. were that too I, I think in the book a lot of the reason why he's an alcoholic stems from him being gay yeah, which they don't tap into. Obviously. Yeah, in the film, which, it's more of a straight know. relationship, yeah. and then, yeah, there were changes made. Changes were made, and yeah, it's um, it's a really. I mean, but film. I still think it's a good movie. Though. It's a good I, movie, I, I but it's, it's good that's movie. where I'm like, it's B tier for me because, yeah. like, it was clearly something that was that touched a nerve at the time, but it just hasn't aged well. Yeah, yeah. or other I mean, it's nowhere near my favorite better. Wilder film for sure. No, nowhere but near. But, I, I think yeah. it's a decent Best Picture winner. I have it in B. Okay. We're going to put it in B. B. All right. All right. B, B for, for Billy. B for yeah. B. B I was going to say B for booze, but, you know. No. <laughs> it works, too. Damn. Jesus. All right. Uh, the best years of our lives. S. 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 I, I love this movie. It is so provocative for the so time, good. too. I almost can't believe that they allowed this movie to happen after yeah. world war ii because of what it's saying about wartime and how veterans were just left in the dust when they came home they didn't have support systems and i think that the the st- structure of the film is is really brilliant the frederick march performance i love so much i yeah i, th- I think it's it's a masterpiece i would put it in us it's it's there's a lot of these movies that um, have like uh, profound viewing experiences for me that are tied into how I make these decisions. And I had seen this movie when I was a, before I went to college, but I remember my first year of film school, they screened a print of it for the incoming freshmen in both the film school and the drama school, because they were like, this is good for movie makers and actors. And um, it just reaffirmed what um made me want to devote my life to this, you know, seeing that film in that way um, and realizing like the greater purpose of why we create art. Um, it's to give people windows into experiences that um, aren't necessarily our own, you know? And I think it's just, it's so profoundly moving that a film that was made about a very specific time and place, World War II veterans returning home and um, feeling as though they have no place in society and trying to navigate how they reintegrate into it. The fact that, you know, I, as a person who have no real, you know, I I wasn't alive during that time, as far as anyone knows, Um, but- um, No, we know somebody that was, but- Yeah, exactly. but that I can watch that movie and still, and see so much of myself in it, you know, yeah. and see so much of my own experiences and my own family experiences. It speaks to the power of that movie as a modern piece of filmmaking. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. I think I put it in my A tier, mm-hmm. just personally speaking, but I totally co-signed with 
the sentiment that's been expressed and I'm perfectly okay with it being considered an S tier because it is an excellent movie. Yeah. All right. Going in the S tier. We got three films in the S tier. So I love getting, them all too. It's getting, it's getting it's getting busy up in that S tier. Um all right. Gentlemen's agreement. Can we agree to put this I, I put this in C just because I remember barely anything from this movie. Yeah. I think it should go in the C. And, yeah, that's and where I have it too. too. Like, and I'm not just talking about the category. I'm talking about literally <laughs> a body of water. <laughs> <laughs> like to me, it's like C tier. Like, was this really your best option? Really? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I, I'm a big Elia Kazan fan, and um, I think this could have been directed by just about anybody else other than him. Um, you know. Yeah. Even like yeah. Richard Schickel in his biography about Eli Kazan, which is a really great read, he said like, "Yeah, this is not a very good movie." <laughs> um, <laughs> it's really, like, <laughs> and I'm like, L- look, The Bishop's Wife is not a great movie, but I'd give that best picture over this. <laughs> yeah, Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street probably get my vote. Uh, I love that we got two Christmas movies nominated mm-hmm. for Best Picture in the same year. They were like, we need help. I love it. Help us, <laughs> holiday movies. So, we're gonna, and, so C or C? I don't know. C. Yeah, C. He's good. All right. Hamlet, 1948. D. I'm just going to throw it out there for D. Um, I, I think this is, it's not a successful Shakespeare adaptation to me. Mm. I was a little kinder to it when I was talking about it on Kevin Jacobson's podcast. Um, Let me pick up that name for you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I will say that um, the fact that it beat two of my favorite films, The Red Shoes and Treasure of Sierra Madre, um, doesn't look particularly well. Um, Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I I don't know. Uh, What does everybody else think? I, I, either way. I, I hear I, you that you know it beat two really really great movies i don't think it's the best shakespeare adaptation but for me if if this existed for no other reason than to uh preserve sir Lawrence olivier's performance as hamlet on film then that is enough to get it to at least be tier, um, which is where I have it. I I like that they took this kind of German expressionistic style to it, um, that they did not just like do a straight Shakespeare adaptation. They really stylized it in a way to make it feel like cinematic. Um and I mean, I I don't love all the performances in this. Um but um but Olivier, I mean I no notes, ten out of ten, he's the greatest to ever do it, blah blah blah, you know, and, and just for that. just for preserving that performance alone i think it deserves at least b tier i myself would not put it above beer b tier <laughs> i mean to be fair he has best actor so therefore i don't have to give this best picture and i think so... i'm being go ahead no. sorry no it's fair. Okay. I, I i agree with the sentiments that mr laws has presented um which is uh like it beat the red shoes and the treasure sierra madre two of the greatest films ever made um, and I don't, and I think that there are, there are other versions of Hamlet that, that I've seen that I watch more. Um, I do agree with you, Dan, like Olivia's performance is incredible. Um, but there's other things in that movie that I do not think are on the same level. And, mm-hmm. um, that's why I think like him having best actor for it is a perfect thing for him. It's a perfect case to like, you can hand best actor the, to this guy. But the movie, let's 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 stay away from that angle, and and I so that's why I think it's I think I would firmly place it in a in a comfortable, nice C tier is where I would put it. It's where I have it. Yeah, it's definitely the best 
Olivier Shakespeare performance that doesn't involve the use of blackface. So, well, you know, yeah, that's true. He did um, cut that out of Hamlet. He was, yeah, he, was said, yeah. like, <laughs> he actually, to... he actually was gonna, if he lived long <laughs> enough, he was gonna make Hamlet with blackface and he was going to have Richard Dreyfus play <laughs> Hamlet, but he just never got around to it. So that's why Richard yeah. Dreyfus has been very sour about it. You know? well, Olivier is another one that I can be very hot and cold on. Yeah. Like he can be really incredible, but then there's other times I'm like, God, you, I do not like the choices you're making right now. And I can understand why Brenna idolized you. <laughs> or like, that was certainly a choice you made just there. Yeah. <laughs> not sure what it was, but it was a choice. Is the C tier okay with this for this one? I mean, fine. I'm okay moving it up. I that's fine. I think my my low grade really was just because the red shoes is my favorite. Yeah. Like I my like favorite movie. Yeah. Like it's it's really high up there for me. So red shoes, absolutely no question. I just yeah. rewatched it for like the hundredth time. Like mm-hmm. I saw once wow. a screening of Martin Scorsese's personal 35 millimeter print mm. of that film, which was gorgeous. So Zach, you really gotta stop. <laughs> I didn't watch it just with making, Marty. Now okay? you're just being, like, now you're just making me angry. No. I didn't just, I, I didn't watch it. Floor full right, of names so. just fell I mean, on the like, floor. The other I night, mean, Zach's yeah. like, I'm like Zach, what are you doing? He goes, I'm going to see a uh, what is it, a 70 millimeter print of Zodiac or whatever. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you can just go right to hell. You know what I mean? Not like I'm not going to go see it if there's yeah, I know. Well, in Los I, Angeles. You know, you know what? It's the yeah, and you answered the question appropriately, but. We have one more year for the forties. <laughs> yeah, uh, all the king's men. It's fine. Yeah, it's it's not. It's not yeah. Like I it. put it in B. I, I do yeah. like that movie. I don't rewatch mm-hmm. it a ton, but I remember the first time I saw it, thinking that yeah, this was this was solid. I put it's it better in better than too. the remake. Oh, oh yeah. Well, you know, most well, movies are better than yeah. the remake <laughs> of all the all king's men. I put it in the C tier for me. That's where I put it, but you know, I'm voting B. I like the heiress better, but yeah, um, I think this is a perfectly fine film. I also yeah. like Letter to Three Wives better, honestly. But, oh, hmm. I love Letter to Three Wives. Yeah, I really like that Broderick Crawford performance. I think he's really good in it. He you is. Guys really wanna, good, yeah. You guys want to? You guys want to put it in the B? Yeah, he's fine. B for Broderick. Fine. <laughs> you know. All right, I'll put it there. All about Eve. Oh, a one of my favorite films. A. Ever made. a if not s like i, I would have thought we were all going to be s with this one yeah i'm I like on, an s. i'm like on the ba- i go back and forth a and s but i could i could put it in s honestly listen i think the screenplay is an s the absolutely yeah. Yeah. the the movie itself i'm kind of between an a and s can go either way i could put it in there for now honestly in myself and then like if there's something else it would be one of the first things that i would consider to kick out Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It's uh, not a kick out for me. I love Sunset <laughs> Boulevard so much. Like yeah. that, if that were the winner, I mean, same I mean, I mean, that would be I mean, an S yeah, as well. But I love All About Eve. Yeah. And it's such a sharp film about mm-hmm. show business and about the industry. And we hadn't really seen a film like that up to that time. And it's kind of yeah. cool that they voted for a movie like that, yeah. that was poking fun at themselves. It has, I mean, some of the greatest performances that we've seen on film right mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. betty davis of course is margo channing but george sanders george sanders my favorite favorite oh, all time. Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah god he's uh, so freaking good i'm uh with sophia on this one i mean i think sunset boulevard is the better film because billy wilder was a better filmmaker than joseph l Mankiewicz. Yeah. Mm-hmm. but i think that when you just look at all about eve as a movie separate and apart from the oscar race it's such a fantastic a plus film you know like yeah. the story that um Mankiewicz tells about when betty davis was first hired to do this role they said to him look mm-hmm. she's gonna you know come with a pen and paper and rewrite your script <laughs> because that's what she does on every film that she makes and having rewritten she will then direct and apparently <laughs> when betty the, the one time that's the one time she said i have nothing more no to add to this <laughs> because, <laughs> you know he's already done it and he did like it is one of the best screenplays ever written yeah. and i think it results in one of the best 
films ever made. All right. I'm putting it, I'll put it in the S tier. That's where it's going. S for Sanders. Yes. <laughs> American in Paris, 1951. Ooh. Should probably... I like this movie better than most people, but, um, you know, I think that, um, you know, when you compare it to A Place in the Sun and A Streetcar Named Desire, which are two of my all-time yeah. favorite films, and, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it's not a bad winner, I don't think. I think it makes, it it is um, looked at that way because it beat those two films. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'm, a, I'm actually a, a Vincent Minnelli uh, Stan, um, you know, I think he's kind of underrated um, in terms of old Hollywood directors. Certainly made some clunkers because I mean he made like forty films or something like that. But you know, his use of color and camera movement is kind of unrivaled for that time period. So look at all the winners that we've done already, and show me one that has, um half as much style as this i mean this is an american in paris is very nearly an experimental film in comparison to everything else we've looked at and i love it i think it's completely crazy that a movie like this won best picture Mm -hmm. um but here we are i think that the finale sequence is just all timer, one of the best cinematic sequences ever committed to film. Um, Gene Kelly is just impossibly charming in this movie. Um, shame about Leslie Caron, but what can you do? You can't have everything. Um, <laughs> and just like, I mean, the Gershwin songs are classics for a reason and i just think this move i have this in my a tier just for like how different it is even as a musical it is trying to do things with the cinematic form that nothing we have seen on this list before has done and that we won't see another film on this list attempt to do for many years yeah um whether or not that works for you is a whole other question but i think (laughs) but i think that the fact that it's so different and trying to do something that's so different for me that pushes this up higher than what i would maybe put it if i was just ranking the movie on its own Mm, this movie's just okay to me (laughs) (laughs) i don't I don't really like it all that much. I don't hate it. It's, it's fine. <laughs> I put it in my C tier, but eh, son of a bitch, it's just Josh okay. is coming in me like to that long soliloquy by Danny and, and Josh. <laughs> it's fine. It it is. You know, like, <laughs> oh my god! I maybe also am letting it. Yeah, it be competition that I just have so much more stronger feelings about than this particular film that might color my and, reaction to it. And look, it's no singing in the rain. That's but the, but that's the, the other it, thing. It, it, it set yeah. up what yeah. singing in the rain would. Then. Exactly. Yeah. We don't get for... singing in the rain without this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I, would, I put it in the B tier for me. I'd be willing to go to B, but that's about as high as I could go for that movie personally. Just because. I agree. I, I agree. It's more in the C tier, personally. But then I start thinking about what Dan's talking about, and and I'm like, yeah, it does really have a lot of style. And then also, I as much as I'm like, I am bitter about the fact that yes, it steals a lot of like the awards thunder for Singing in the Rain. You don't get Singing in the Rain without a movie like this, and so it's it's like yes, no, yes, no, come back and forth. And so, um, but it it is a it's a it's a good it's a good movie it's not a great movie but yeah i think b is fine yeah i like b i like this movie a lot more than i thought i would when i watched it because i had seen streetcar and a place in the sun before i watched an american in paris so hmm. and kind of knew the reputation of the movie as being you know one that stole best picture away from one of those but really i mean i i was hooked and i thought it was a really fun movie to watch the technical components in the movie are just dazzling but yeah i think a b b tier is a good place for it all right i think we're averaging out to about a b i'm comfortable with that Mm -hmm. Um, 
All right. The greatest show on earth. Oh, Listen. boy. Is F, not the F, greatest show F, on earth. F, F hates this movie. Okay. This fights with Cimarron as my least favorite best picture winner of all time. But we don't get Steven Spielberg I know, without That's the most it. ironic thing about him telling that story about him watching that movie. It's like, I'm glad that it worked so well for him, but it really is one of the worst movies. Hey, when you're a kid, you see a lot of movies that might inspire you. And then you go back in your life and you're like, (laughs) like a career worst performance from Jimmy Stewart too. Oh God. God. Uh, Mm -hmm. Awful movie. uh, Uh, Yeah. I, I think you can't blame somebody for saying like the first movie that my parents dragged me to that no. opened the doorway too much. I mean, I get it. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, no, but no, you can't. It's, yeah. I'd say F. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> it's I, absolutely it's awful. for me. Yeah. I have it in D. Like, I I don't think it's the nadir of Best Picture winners. But honestly, like, I probably only have it in D over F because, like, I like the animals. Like I like the circus. <laughs> right. oh I like God. the circus vibe. I like the production design, and it is Cecil B. DeMille. Like it is big. This I want, I the set pieces other... are nice. Like they work. I want that on but, a teaser for uh, you, Dan. I like me I like, too. I like the I like the animals. I like. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say like I like the the train sequence. I would have accepted that <laughs> the animal. The animal. <laughs> I um, just like the circus. I like the circus. I, I like the, way that the circus Sammy vibe is great. Yeah. yeah. Like, right. I'm sorry. But I, is, I'm not going to argue against putting yeah. it in F. It's, like, going, in, it's F. going in F. Good this is an F. We, <laughs> we, we're spending way too much time on these lower ones. Absolutely um, terrible movie. <laughs> from here to eternity. I'd say a, a B, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause I, go, it's... I go C, personally. But... Oh, wow. Oh, this was actually an A for me. Average. Oh, okay. I, I actually initially had this in B and then moved it down to a C. Oh. Because I, I didn't remember it very well. Yeah. It's very it's and like, forgettable. And I remember watching it and going like, like I feel like I should watch like I should like this movie more than I do while watching it, given its reputation. I do think it's good. Um yeah. but I nothing in it is up to the famous scene that everyone knows on the mm-hmm. beach. And I think that that particular scene is so good that it just makes the rest of the movie pale in comparison. And also, like, it's not the best years of our lives. <laughs> like, yeah. No, <laughs> it's not. But, but, I mean, that's, you know, that that's not fair on the to this movie. But, yeah. you know. I will also freely admit that I am just a huge Montgomery Clift fan. I was going to yeah. say. Like, he too. is that's, that's, so yeah. good in this. Yeah, he does a lot of heavy lifting for the movie. Yeah. I will admit that. But I still really love this film um like i understand maybe not going quite as high as an a but i think b at least okay. should be for this yeah. film we can go we can go yeah on it we can yeah. be on it i'll put it in b's B. fine it was in my a tier too okay. because i did a montgomery clift rewatch um during covid and like early covid and it was yeah i really liked this too He's my yeah, favorite Montgomery actor Clift. from this period. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I really love. I him. haven't seen From Here to Eternity in a long time. I remember liking it a lot, but I also I think Roman Holiday and maybe even Shane are a place above it. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Roman right. Holiday was my winner. Do you love Roman Holiday? We're getting through the, fi- getting through the 50s. We gotta, we gotta move. Yes, uh, the 70s right. will take forever. On the waterfront. <laughs> A. I yeah, I feel like this is an A. A. Yeah. I have A. a. All right. A straddling S, but mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Yes. I agree. Another A. All right. Marty. I love Marty. Yeah. That said, I have it in B. <laughs> yeah. I have it in B also. Like I like it, but it's about as high as I give praise to it. I, I do think it's interesting that it's the first con uh winner that also won best picture yeah um but b <laughs> yeah i think that's good yeah that's where C? i have it too i would have c c but, that uh, low right 
you know, I would give it at least a B, if not, you know, for the the uh, plot point in quiz show. That's of, fair. Uh, that is yeah. fair. That bumps it up. <laughs> oh God! Forever the debate of film year versus ceremony year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like Marty. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd give it at least a B. Yeah. So. Oh, man. No, it's, it's just too... those performances are so good. And yeah. it's also like you look at this best picture lineup, it's it's far and away, I think, the the best. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm not always gonna vote for love as a many splendored thing. I think mm-hmm. not. So all I'm just thinking about so right now. Bad. All I'm thinking about right now is watching Quiz Show. So um because <laughs> what a masterpiece. All right. Yeah. Um feel like I know where this one's going. Around the world in 80 days. F F, F. All right, F. moving that one in there. F. F. We're gonna, beat giant. Don't watch it. Bad movie. Oh, yeah. The fact that that movie beat Giant. Oh, so boring, Mike. And God. I love Jules Verne. I love that world, but that yeah. movie is awful. Oh, God. It fucking sucks. One um, of the worst endings to any movie I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. So. Horrible. <laughs> the Bridge on the River Kwai. I'd a say this me. is an A. A. Grappling yeah. yeah, S. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. A. Putting that in there. Locking it in. Love These are going Lee. quick. Listeners are going, oh my God, these are going so quick now. Uh, Gigi. C. Did you, what did you say? C. Oh, I thought you said B, and I was like, that's too high. No. I actually went D for this one. Yeah, I went D too. I like C for champagne, as in the night they invented. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 go, I go C. Not even the best Vincent Minnelli movie released in 1958. No. So, <laughs> I don't know. I got, you know, I mean, I think the design elements might drop it up to a C, but it is also, yeah. I mean, you talk about a movie that does not age well in terms of its sensibilities. <laughs> like, <laughs> look, girls. <laughs> look, if you just take out that opening number, it may be like a solid C as opposed to a C bordering on D, okay? Like, can I, can I just say I've, I've recently watched a lot of Maurice Chevalier movies from the early 1930s? And I'm so I mean, sorry. There's just nobody else like him. He's just the it's oddest true. man I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> C okay, so C so or D. A C or D. I don't. C or D. I think C. Like I like you said, C. Zach. Like C for the fine. design elements, like put it up Ooh, to us. I think it was a little high, but we're being. I know people yeah. hate that movie. We're I don't hate Gigi. I, I just think it's. I don't hate it. It's just so stuffy. Yeah, yeah. I think it's pretty bad, but I'm okay with the C. <laughs> That's worth honestly, the. Honestly, discussing. I think you should go in the D. That's <laughs> true. But I haven't yeah. watched it in a very long time, but. You know, Ben Hur. Um, I think a B. Yeah, if if it would be great. If anything if, like, for could... those chariot races alone, for mm-hmm. God's sake. Yeah, and for the buried um, love story between Ben Hur and Masala, that mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. apparently uh, everyone was aware of that except for Charlton Heston. Yeah, yeah. which yeah. is Classic. amazing. <laughs> yeah, but also it's perfect. perfect. But yeah, but I mean, big epic. Kind of, you know, timeless. It's always on. Yeah. It does have a horrible case of brown face in it. Oh, <laughs> oh but yeah. oh, hands yeah. down, yes, it is. Yeah, um, but um, but also what too, minute those... was that exactly of the three hour and <laughs> yeah. fifty minute runtime? But the uh, but those, I mean, those chariot sequences. Are yeah, kind of hard to deny that. I, really... I think B is yeah. Good B for A it. is yeah. no, 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 not quite. B. No, yeah, B is right where it belongs, I believe.